A month ago, I made a video about my experiment to sell AI-generated art on Etsy, because I'd seen so many YouTubers going on and on about how much money you could make every month just by doing this one simple thing. I was skeptical at the time, because my parents always taught me that if something seems too good to be true, then it probably is. Really, like you could just press a button, generate some art, then put it on a website where all kinds of people would pay all kinds of money to buy it. But still, in these videos, there were the figures right there in the video thumbnail. So those couldn't be entirely made up, could they? So maybe this was like the lottery where you can't win if you don't play. So I spent a little money to get started, and then I spent a bit more, and then I spent some more, and some more. I figured this was an investment because it would be well worth it if this did in fact turn into a line of passive income. And now, a month later, what do I think? I was stupid. In this video, I'm going to tell you exactly how stupid I was and what I learned. Okay, let's jump right in with the gory bits because that's probably what you want to know most. And that's the answer to two questions. One, how much did I make? And two, how much did I spend? So let's answer the first question. How much did I make? Zero dollars. Nothing. I'm left feeling like this whole thing is kind of a Ponzi scheme. Like the money that's to be made with AI art and Etsy is in talking about the money that's to be made with AI art and Etsy. And how much did I spend? I spent $858.97. On the face of it, that just seems like a stupid, colossal waste. So let me break it down and maybe I'll feel a little better by the end of this. So the first expense was in buying the AI generation tool Super Machine. That was an AppSumo lifetime deal. And I went up to the second tier because that gave me 2,000 credits a month. And that was $160.62. And this is in Canadian dollars. And then there were the Etsy listings. Now, I generated more listings than I actually kept up. I'll get back to that in a bit. But I paid $9.29 in listing fees, which are pretty low, but then they also take a cut off your sales. Thankfully, I wasn't hit by that, but I know some people at higher levels complain about Etsy taking 12% or 15% of their sales. I ran Etsy ads at the beginning because one video suggested, oh, that's a great way to move your stuff to the top. But then in practice, it turns out other people say, yeah, but if it's at the top, people see it as an ad and they don't actually look at it as real content. And then I started worrying about what am I going to be charged if they're just charging me for eyeballs and not anything that actually leads to a sale. So I cut those off at, at some point and the Etsy ads cost me a total of $4.02. So not that much, but for zero results, it kind of sucks. So I changed horses midstream and I went from using Super Machine to generate the images to using Midjourney because I saw what people were producing with Midjourney and the quality was just much better. And I was getting pretty frustrated with what I was producing with Super Machine. I'll talk more about that in a minute. And with Midjourney, I figured, well, if I'm gonna be doing this a lot, I want to not be worried about my limits. There's a basic tier, which gives you a certain number of image generations a month, well, they go by CPU usage. So basically you get computer time that you're allotted. And once you use yours up on the first tier, that's it. In the middle tier, you get a certain amount of generation on the servers at a fast rate. And once you've used that up, they just kind of wind you back to a slow rate and you're never cut off. So I figured, okay, let's try that. So I bought an annual subscription to Midjourney and that was $392.13. So this was the big whopper that when I was seeing what I could produce, I felt fine about it. But then when there were no sales, I felt less fine about that. Turns out also that Midjourney produces images at just 1024 pixels by 1024. So that's not really useful for anything except looking at on screen. If you want to print those, you're going to need them at a much higher resolution. So I had to buy uh, upscaling software. There are services that you can pay for as you go, but I always prefer to pay for things up front. So I bought something called uh, Topaz Photo AI. Turns out to be really good, but you pay for that. It was $136.13. I also wanted to do some other things in addition to this AI art generation. So I wanted to create a website 
where I could house all this stuff like ebooks and AI art and whatever else that I didn't want to kind of confuse with my own personal website, which links to my work work. So to keep that all nice and separate, I registered a domain and that cost me $80.75 because I picked some clever one and not an obvious one, which I'm probably going to regret when it comes time to renew that. I might change that. Uh, I also got hosting for the website, which was $76.03. Now with the website hosting, I don't feel so bad because it's a lifetime plan, which I've never had before, and it's good for up to 10 websites. Right now, I've been paying just for my one single website to be hosted. And that's going to come up for renewal in a couple of years. And with a lot of these plans, like the one I got, when they come up, they cost exponentially more to renew. So when that time comes around, I can just shift that over to just one of these slots. That's cool to know that that's there. So I don't feel like that's a waste. So like I said, I kind of had a false start with Super Machine and I did a do-over with Midjourney. So as you can see, here are some images that I created with Super Machine. Here's an astronaut. This is one of the ones that worked out. I found my success rate with these was pretty low. It was like one in every five attempts would produce something useful or sometimes every 10, maybe even every 20. So it was a lot of work to get something kind of passable. But now here's the same prompt in Mid Journey. And it's just so much more artful an image. Here's, uh, I, the, let's see, the prompt was something like ginger-haired boy wizard. Yeesh. And now here's that in mid-journey. Like, this is art. This is pretty beautiful. Who knows whose work it's based on, which is a whole other thing. So I redid a lot of the work in mid-journey, which meant that I took down a lot of what was there and posted new things. So that accounts for some of the, the listing fees. But, I mean, it's pretty nominal. I just felt much better about the stuff that I was producing and didn't want something up there that I didn't feel great about. And in Midjourney, I produced something like 900 images in the course of this. And I didn't even come close to touching my monthly fast generation allowance. It, I used something like 11 or 14%. So if this is something that you think you're going to be doing, it's a pretty fair deal. But when that year of Midjourney runs out, will I renew it? I don't know. The super machine thing is a lifetime deal. So that's kind of contingent on two things. One, are they going to stay in business with their servers or whatnot? And two, because it's so much more work, am I actually going to want to use it? Now, to be fair, the people behind Super Machine keep working on it and it keeps improving all the time. And who knows when Stable Diffusion is going to jump ahead of Midjourney because it's, or Leonardo or whichever one is going to prevail. It's, it's a constantly changing scene. So we'll see. But people talk about this like it's as simple as pushing a button. And like I say, coming up with good prompts that generate good images, that's a whole thing unto itself. It's not so bad with Midjourney because it produces some pretty beautiful results, even on vague descriptions. But then there's the Etsy part. For each one of these listings that you create, you have to create some sample artwork to post on the website. I created little uh, collage thumbnails for these things because you don't want to show the people the full scale piece of artwork because they could just download that. Now Etsy doesn't want to host these images for you, so you have to zip up an archive of these, put them on a server somewhere, grab a link to that, and put it in a PDF. So for each of these sets, I also had to create a stylized PDF with a link to that and post that on the Etsy listing. And then you have to write copy for it, and I used AI to do that, but you still have to tweak it and customize it for each listing. And then you have to go through all their ticky boxes to create the listing. And this ended up being a lot of work. Like I spent two full weekends, one day each weekend at least, just cranking out this stuff for Etsy. In the end, I made 19 listings and that felt like a lot of work. But then I saw an expert on YouTube saying, oh, you should have at least 300 to make the Etsy algorithm happy. And some of these listings had sets of images that had 2,000 pictures in them well, where am I going to find time to do all of this stuff? Which brings me to the business of it. You know, in the end, it just kind of felt like chasing a buck. I've never been skilled at that. Like, like when I was an actor, I was crappy at finding auditions to go to. When I was a writer, writing novels, I had such a hard time marketing those and, and getting them out to people. And as a cartoonist, you know, people are always asking me to do work. I'm like, I don't know what to charge. I don't know what's fair. 
The trick with AI is doing competitive research to find out what people want and what people will pay for. And watching all these YouTube videos and reading articles and such ended up feeling like playing whack-a-mole with all these different niches, with different people saying, oh, do this, do that, do this, or spend your, all your time looking at keywords or using paid tools with a monthly fee to look up what people are buying on Etsy. So see what's selling and then sell that. So even though I said I wasn't going to do that in the last video, I did end up going, okay, so what is selling? Or what are the YouTubers saying is selling? So I did some of these things like, like nursery images or flower tiles or mock-ups of t-shirts or rooms with blank art that people could put their own work in. And now with the mock-ups, that was extra work because I had to create layered images and remove bits and make it so that people could slide their own art in there. I did Tumblr wraps because that turned out to be a thing. And I even did pictures of cats. And I'm really not fussy about cats. I did do a print on demand thing after looking at this Tumblr thing and thinking, okay, well, why don't I just link right to a shop because you can connect things up to Etsy. So I went with, I think it was Printly and created Tumblrs and put images on them that I really liked. But then I kind of got this eh, feeling about it. Like, what if there are issues with shipping or something? And this could end up costing me a lot of money for what I don't know that I'm doing here. So ultimately, I'll, I pulled those down. Now, maybe I could do this if I had a business partner who was good at competitive research, who could just give me a grocery list of things that I could produce. Because looking around at what was out there, I felt like, yeah, with these tools, I am very confident that I could just create whatever. But I can't really do things that I have no personal attachment to. I feel like art comes about somewhere in the friction between the experiences that you have and the feelings you have about those experiences and then the way you use your own personal skills to express all of that. And here, there was just nothing. It was like getting to be really good at using a vending machine. Yeah, but anybody with a fistful of quarters can come and use that vending machine. So there's nothing distinct about it. And yes, I'm a nerd. I've had fun playing with this stuff. And I don't think it's all been a waste because I've come away with this with new knowledge and some tools that I can use for other things. Like I'm looking forward to using, well, I already have used Midjourney to generate some reference art for my work work. Uh, I was doing a picture two chapters ago of a Paleolithic man in his cave. And I was like, oh, what would his Paleolithic man's cave look like? So I generated some images and just kind of extrapolated from that. And that was really helpful because there's no references out there to look at for, for photography or whatnot. I, my focus has always been on characters. The so backgrounds are my weakness. So, hey, why not get some help with that? And I've got lots of pretty desktop wallpapers. And then, like I say, the upscaling tool is, is helpful for some things with my work. And I've learned how to use these tools, which is good. In a way, the AI art, you know, kind of what, what felt good about it was it was like going back in time and picking up skills for all the other kinds of artwork that I never learned how to do. But then something about that made me feel uncomfortable. It was like in high school when I wanted to learn how to do serious art, not just cartoons. So I started learning how to do photorealistic pencil sketches because I had a pal who, she was great at that. And so she kind of taught me like Betty Edwards drawing on the right side of the brain and stuff like that, how to, how to do this. But in the end, I was like, well, where's the art in this? I'm just reproducing a photograph. So again, it felt like I was apologizing for being a cartoonist. But I realized that if by the time you're an adult, there are things that you're good at and things that you're not good at, that's pointing to what you're interested in and what you like. And so I like cartoons, reading them and producing them. So that's what's of value to me. So why am I chasing this other thing? And ultimately, that says something about how I want to spend my time. I want to spend my time creating my own content. I don't want to spend my spare time chasing these stray ideas just because they sell and populating somebody else's shop. I'd rather be, you know, creating stories or diary comics or comic strips or zines or books or just doing crafts or just living my life when I'm in my spare time away from work. And the high irony of all of this is that while I was chasing this stuff on the sidelines, I got a pay rise at work. 
So it's like the world is paying me for what it wants me to do. So why am I trying to do something else? So learn from my experience, my friend, and don't do what I did. So that's been my experience with AI art and Etsy. I hope this has been useful. Hope this has been helpful. If you have a different experience, that's great. Good for you. I would love to hear about it. But for me, I've realized that it's time to close this shop and move along and focus on what I love. So all the best to you. And thanks for watching and listening. Take care. Bye-bye.